Good evening, everybody. So lucky to be with you guys on this Wednesday night. It's going to be another awesome, awesome evening of fellowship. And, you know, us just getting around the word of God. Excuse my dog's carrying on you. And, uh, <laughs> yes, the dog has just been taken away. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> So I, I know some of you guys thought that was Bash, but it wasn't Bash. It was actually my poodle. <laughs> <laughs> Bash is very hungry. <laughs> so uh, before we carry on, guys, I'd just like to let uh, uh, Tasso just say good evening. And um, Bash is not going to be with us tonight, unfortunately, because he has uh, some work that he has to sort out. But uh, yeah, you want to say how's it to everyone, Tasso? Yes, hello, everybody. Good to be with you guys again. Um, looking at uh, the book of Romans, and uh, we're going to get into some good stuff tonight, and uh, I believe it will bless you, give you a better understanding, uh, more crisp uh, sort of uh, theology, and, and also, you know, um, heritage where we come from, and why we should be celebrating basically um, the birthright that we have in Jesus. I think that uh, those would be important factors, but uh, very, very good to be with you guys tonight. Yes, so guys, uh, we we want to break it down like this um, because I don't know if you guys originally remember why we went into Romans. We went into Romans seven because we were looking at it through the lens of uh, um, depression and uh, condemnation in eight and all that kind of stuff. So we we actually went through. Uh, or no condemnation, should I say, uh, in eight. And then we went through it from, uh, we did completed seven, we completed eight in about two months. Took us a long time because we were going verse by verse, more like word by word, eh, Tasso? Every, yeah. every every word we uh, we read, the Holy Spirit was giving us something to to talk about. So um, we've, we've dealt with that now, guys, and we are going to tonight, it's going to be a shorter than usual evening, um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go into 9, 10, and 11. Tasso is going to pull out some of the main the main themes from 9, 10, and 11 for us. And we're going to chat around those, like you said, just to, to round off Romans nicely for us. Because obviously um, we go into the, the whole thing of on, on from Israel's point of view now, 9, 10, and 11. And um, then what we were deciding to do, guys, as a, as a church family, is that we're going to start themed themed evenings from uh, or themed teachings and series from next week for you guys and uh, next week what we're going to do is um, we're going to start off with uh, the sovereignty of God so we will take sovereignty we're going to take it from Genesis and we're going to break it down uh, I like the way the, uh, the word that Jess used earlier she said we'll map it out and what we'll do is we'll map it We'll map it from Genesis all the way through to, to, to uh, um, Revelation. And we'll show you the consistent theme of sovereignty so that there's no holes. Uh, Tasso was saying you'd like to go into a little bit of history, where some of the, the different teachings of sovereignty come from. And that's going to be really interesting. I, I just feel that it's a very important subject. I, I feel it needs clarity. I, I don't know about you, Tasso. Yeah, but um, it's a very confusing yeah. theme. Eh? It's a very yeah, uh, confusing yeah. topic in the Bible. Yeah. And, um, and I believe personally, and, and we'll see it uh, well you know, uh, right through our teachings, it is the doctrine that sends more people to hell than any other doctrine, actually. Sure. It's true. Yeah. yeah absolutely true. It's, it's something that we definitely need to clear up. Yeah. And also, you know, just just the understanding of it, 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 it sort of uh, disarms a Christian. Christians don't know what... Uh, what they are in control of and what God's in control yeah. of, what they're not in control of, you know. So, yeah. so it disarms you and you, you don't know how to approach certain things in your life. So it, can, it becomes very confusing in your walk of faith, you know. Very because, um, I mean, if you're thinking, no, no, that's God's got to sort that out. And God's going, no, but I'm waiting for you to sort that out. Uh, yeah. You know, you can lose 10 years of your life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. So we're going to get into that, guys. So I just want to let everybody give us a little bit of a reaction. What do you guys think about going into these themed uh, um, series? So we'll start off for the next couple of weeks. We'll do um, the, uh, um, what did I just call it now? The Sovereignty Doctrine. Sovereign. And then after that, we'll go into prayer. And then from there on, we can maybe go into Law and Grace. 
and break down the uh, um, you know law and grace from Genesis all the way through. So let us know, guys. Let us know what you think. Um, give us a thumbs up there if you guys are happy and some hearts if you guys are excited. Yeah. Let's see what you guys have for us. <laughs> I don't see anybody saying anything. I'm not too sure if they're happy, guys. <laughs> hello, everybody. Anybody out there? Are you guys there? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> uh, will be good to map it out and break it down and everything. Yes, yes, it will be good. Will be good. Right, so let me see something. Yo. Okay, cool. Are you can, can, can you vote on a poll? Mm -hmm. That's better one. <laughs> I think you've forgotten that we're, my wife has forgotten that we actually live yet. She's chatting to me. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. Okay, there you go, guys. Please vote on the poll. Let us know what you think. Great, great idea or don't do it. Talking about polls, how many of you guys actually uh, got involved with today's poll? You said the question was, um, can a believer sin the unpardonable sin, commit the unpardonable sin? And uh, yeah, we actually had a 30-70 split there. And I think it was it's important to let the guys know that listen, a believer, there's a bit of a there's a bit of a catch to that question. Can a believer commit the impardonable sin. Well, if he still believes that Jesus is who Jesus is, <laughs> can he still commit an, uh, the unpardonable sin? It's an interesting one, eh? Yep. Did you see that one, Tessa? <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. Yeah, so, really? yeah, lekker. Okay. I say hell yes. That's, that's a nice re response there. Awesome. For this Christian show, hell yes. <laughs> it's Melissa. Okay. <laughs> we love it. Eh? We've got some real, just it real. Like those, uh, in the American army, you see the hell no, sir. <laughs> oh, hell yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, awesome, man. Okay, so let's open up in prayer and then we're going to bounce through 9, 10, and 11. Tassel is going to pull out some of the most important parts of those. Otherwise, guys, you know what? To be honest with you, if we had to go word for word up until Romans 16, we we will lose you guys. I'm sure we will eventually lose you. So <laughs> we are going to go with the themed ones. Okay. Everybody thinks that's a good idea. Awesome. So next week, we're kicking off with the sovereignty of God from Genesis all the way through. We're going to give you the background. We're going to give you everything. And it's going to be amazing. Let's open it up, open up in prayer quickly right now. Let's just be quiet for a couple of seconds. Yes, and just connect with the King of Kings. Uh, we thank you, Father. We thank you that tonight, right here, right now, in the midst of all this chaos, in the midst of all the stuff that's going on here, Lord, that we are attached to nothing but you. Attached to nothing but you, Father. We stand before you this evening, Father, as true, true sojourners, Lord. We know, Father, that everything that we're doing is, uh, um, it doesn't bring us self-worth. It doesn't give us value. We only get our value and self-worth in you, Lord Jesus. Yes. It's all through you. It's all because of you. It's all from you. It's all about you. And we thank you for that, Jesus. We thank you that you have shown us that secret wisdom of the heart, Father. You've shown us that secret safety that we that the whole world is looking for in our hearts, Lord. That we we don't fear nothing, Lord Jesus. We don't we're not anxious for nothing, Lord Jesus, because we know you are our great reward. Yes, you are Lord. everything we need, Father. We ask you to help those who are at this moment, Lord. A lot of pastors, a lot of churches, a lot of people, Father, are actually finding that without doing the day-to-day -day activities of, of their work and of their careers and, and stuff, they, they find themselves wanting, Father. They find themselves in lack. They find themselves um, preoccupied with, with thoughts of unworthiness and unproduct unproductivity and, 
uh, and they and they see themselves as less, Father, because they're not functioning. But Lord Jesus, we know that we were we weren't made to just function in a in a position. We were made to live in you, Father. Yes, Lord. live in you, Jesus. So, Lord, we just pray and we ask you to, to strengthen those hearts tonight. Strengthen those people in, in who they are in Christ. Uh, just send them a reminder, Father. Touch them on the shoulder. Do something just to remind them that it's not about them, but it's about you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, you for being our everything. Thank you for being our everything, Jesus. Thank you, Father. You're so thank awesome. You. Thank you. We worship you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for your goodness, your love, and your mercy. Yes. That's it, guys. We always got to uh, uh, maintain a sojourner's heart. We are connected to nothing in this place. We're passing through. Amen. We're yep. passing through. And uh, we don't want to be connected to anything on the way that can actually hold us back or pull us down or or uh, uh, taint our hearts in any way. But mm. uh, we pass through holding on to Jesus, focused on him, nothing else. Amen. Absolutely. And uh, the only thing that we are taking with us is our people, it's our relationships, our loved ones, and uh, the souls that God has brought into our lives. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Sure. Awesome. So yeah. journey. So journey. You know, you uh, you find it so difficult. Uh, well, when you speak to people, you know, people find it difficult to to have that concept in their heart. Eh, Tasso? Um, yeah. Just just to be passing through here and not and not connecting yourself to any strings that this place has to offer. You know, yeah. and, yeah. and if and you think to yourself, how many people actually get to that place in their heart? Yeah, you know, and because God has called us to do that, you know, uh, like yeah. you say, uh, He has called us to be notice, not owners, but stewards. Yes, absolutely, and, uh, absolutely. And, and, and that's the concept of a sojourner, you know. I remember yeah. reading the, in uh, Hebrews 11 about Abraham that he says, Look, although I was very, very wealthy and I could have created an, an amazing sort of beautiful house and, you know, exactly. a ranch, whatever. No, he says, I decided to live in a tent because that yeah. kept reminding me that I'm a sojourner here. I'm just a passing by, you know what yeah. I mean? Yes. And uh, so th those are the things that, uh, like you say, in our hearts that yeah. you need to, you know, to, to make that connection, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, sure. because... And again, when a thing, guys, begins to have you or, or, or something out there in the world, whatever you might think, uh, you know, it begins to possess you. You know, you're not possessed. It possesses you. Man, yeah. you do anything you can in your heart to disconnect from that thing. You know, even if you have to give it away, you know, not for the sake of, um, you know, you give it away because... You know, people think when I say that, oh, it's going to bless me now better. No, 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 no. It's because yeah. this has taken hold of you. That's why you give it away. You know? mm. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You know, this whole journey, you know, now that we're talking about this, is that, guys, this whole journey, uh, um, the true heart of, of the Christian journey is to uh, have this relationship with Christ where he becomes more real to us than the very people that sleep in the same bed as us. <laughs> you yeah. know, um, yeah. he becomes more real to us than our wives, our husbands, our children. He becomes more real to us than this this temporary uh, uh, connection in our careers or or whatever it is, whatever it is, like us was saying, you know. And the concept actually is to to get so close to God and so filled by by God Himself that the process in life is to get rid of things, not grab yeah. onto things, you know. Because yeah. it's, a, it's a part of the process of getting ready to go home and be with the Lord. Amen. Yeah. It's a part Absolutely. of the process. Why, why people are, are trying to accumulate things for what I, we don't actually know. And unfortunately, uh, getting caught up in the accumulation process, they miss out on the, the essence of, 
of actually learning to become naked and bare and 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 uh, um, completely filled by God Himself. If you know what yeah. I'm saying, yeah. and uh, and that's the process because what do you take with you, family? What yeah. do you take with you? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, and I think what you're talking about, Diddy, it is people. Listen to me. This is the very heart. What he's yeah. saying now, it is the core. He's talking, uh, I mean, we're talking now uh, the, the very essence, you know what I mean? What's uh, yeah. uh, my existence, if you want to call it. Um, yeah. And uh, I hope you guys are getting this. That This is not just a talk. This is not, we just, uh, you know, he's not just sharing things now, or, you know, don't allow it to go over your head or just, oh, that sounds nice. No, no, no. This is, this is real stuff. This is the real essence, yeah, that we're talking about, and um, uh, and and we need to learn to disconnect for from anything that um, uh, that's trying to 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 take hold of us. It doesn't matter what it is, you know what I mean? Yes, because uh, Christ needs to be our possession. The Bible says, Mm. you know. And yeah. we possess him and he possesses us. And that's that's the only possession that we allow to, uh, you yeah. know, to to have a fullness and, and, and the leverage of abundance of it. You know what I'm trying to say? Uh, yeah. So no, there's no self-control with him. In everything else, there is self-control. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And wow. That's powerful. Yeah. That is Ooh, powerful. Man, that's, no, that's, that's the goal. Yeah. Cool. There's no, yeah. you know. Yeah, that is, that's at the end of the day, that's what it's all about at the end of the day, you know. Yeah. And the thing is, is that, um, you know, if we talk about this stuff for a little while, we'll just see that, you know, the funny thing is that I saw is that every little temporary thing that you try to hold on to or try to accumulate or grab and bring in, uh, um, there's always a certain amount of fear attached to that thing, <laughs> you yeah. know, where, where if you really want to be fearless, learn now. That yeah. none of those things actually have any value, if you know Absolutely. what I'm saying. They have no eternal value, you know, Absolutely. and they actually just robbing us of experiencing eternity right now in our hearts because we're so caught up of maybe the FOMO of not having something, or maybe it's the case of now we have it, we we're too scared to lose it, uh, um, or maybe now we've we've invested so much into something. In our hearts, when I say invested, I'm talking about our hearts, guys. Mm. And we've invested our hearts into this career or this thing. And now what's happened is we've tasted this thing and now the flesh is in task and, and it wants more. Uh, um, oh. Man, there's just so many ways. There's so many things that these weights will beset us and they will they will hold us down and, and stop us from just moving with Christ in the beauty uh, uh, that that free beauty, you know, that free freedom from stuff, from things, from from our own, uh, um, you know, because we, we train our own hearts up into the stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're the like ones that, uh, you know, uh, we we trying to find security in things, and it yeah. was never designed for a human being to find security in things. It was only designed in one person. To find security, yes. to, to have this emotional connection, the feeling yes. of feeling secure, not in, in things or people. It had to be in the person of Christ. So, yeah. uh, you know, the, the the motive can be maybe you want other people to approve you. You know, you might performing, you know, for some other people to approve you. Or you simply, you know, might be... Um, uh, sensing that that you want to do certain things because you want to your, your security is found in uh, God approving you, you know, uh, and and saying to you, "Well done," you know what I mean. And and it's yeah. it's got nothing to do about Jesus. It's got to do about you, you know. Yeah. Or it, it has to be about status, you know. Just uh, you know, your your security and your position is is I need to look that way. And because that's the feeling that that I believe other people see, and then they smile at me, and and then I get that nod, you know, of yeah. whatever it is that you're looking for, yeah. <laughs> you know. So it's always that something out there that we have made those connections, and God is calling us out of that, and that's yeah. darkness, people. 
I'm telling yeah. you now, that's darkness. Yes. And uh, that is so destructive, you know, and, and you've seen it, everybody. I've seen it in my life. I'm sure you guys all have seen it in some area that we held on to that, yeah. uh, you know, that we were we were get, gaining something out of it. But at the end, notice it destroyed us. Yeah. You know? yeah. So yeah. every day we need to look at ourselves and say, am I investing in my flesh or am I investing in my presence in him? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Gee whiz, you, man. Oh, a, like Diddy says, you're wasting your time. You're yeah. wasting your energy on flesh, and the flesh one day is going to go to the ground. So well, yeah. why, are you, why are you putting all your effort there? Yeah, absolutely. You know, sometimes I feel like, you know, we actually got to, like I was using the word train. I don't know if it's the right word, but what we do is we we uh, train ourselves to to – uh, put value in things, and then we can also train ourselves to release the value in something. If you know what I'm saying, yeah. and we yeah. should, and we should learn how to do that. Right? So we should learn how to throw these things off, teach ourselves how to throw these things off for our own benefit. Well, not only so that we can run and be free, but also, you know, why is it that we have to hang on to things? right till the last minute, then lose it to realize, oh, wow, it wasn't actually worth all that time and energy and destruction yeah. and, uh, you know. Um, but we should actually, as mature Christians, mature sons and daughters, who we know, we know where our value lies. Our, our value is eternity, you know. Mm -hmm. So we should get to a place where we are actually letting go of things voluntarily. You know, yeah. we, we're actually saying, you know what, I'm taking this thing and I am consciously putting it in its place that it belongs. I'm putting it in a place where its value is uh, uh, determined uh, um, or its value is uh, um, where it truly finds itself in, in the grand yeah. scheme of things, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So, and we should be doing that with things, with relationships, with, with stuff, with uh, careers. Its Say again? In its context. In its context, yes, that's it. Yeah, we should be doing that. We should be uh, uh, through the authority that we have, and and obviously in our through our identity, we should be taking these things and putting them in their place uh, in this life, so that we can just be free and we can enjoy the things that are eternal, and that's people, you know. Yeah. That's yeah. people. Yeah. So, but that's our job, you know. Those things are not just going to fall into place, guys. <laughs> we have to yeah. put them in their place. You know, I was I was doing a, a sort of a, a lesson yesterday about the mystery Babylon. Yeah. And um, and it's a very very interesting thing about mystery Babylon because uh, mystery Babylon basically is is uh, you know is um, um, put together you know uh, under the value of the, of the of economy. Hmm. So, so in other words, it, it's basically binding uh, together around economy. And uh, if you if you bind something around economy, then you are what you're doing is you are, um, um, you know, you you you're pushing greed. Okay. You yeah. see, so. Yeah. So once once you sort of uh, uh, pushing greed, it should be, um, and, and that actually becomes uh, uh, it becomes a value. Okay. Yeah. So God created the economy to run when you value people, not when you value economy. Mm -hmm. Nice. See? Yeah. Nice. So yeah. Th this system is, is, is th that he's talking about in Revelation 17 is actually entrenched in economy. And everybody is looking out for themselves. That's why the yeah. economy does. Economy yeah. puts you to always look after self. Self. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. So what do they do? They say to you, spend and buy stuff, spend and buy stuff, spend, because it's always the spin is around economy. Yeah, yeah. So Go true. out there, are we giving you credit, get on to credit, spend, and the money is going to start spinning. But the problem is that the foundation is always self. Yes, 
<laughs> and uh, and what it does, it's it's actually st- sustains my own economy. You see, and it yeah. destroys all else around me. Yeah. So <laughs> that's mystery Babylon, guys. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So, so you, you and, and actually the, the very root of mystery Babylon um, has its core on spirituality because spirituality created the economy. Yeah. What what in other words, what they believe spiritually created the fundamentals of how economy should run and why we should yeah. value economy above every, any you know anything else and. Um, you know, for me, the more I look at it, that um, you know, uh, th- this type of, of spirituality is it's called harlotry, and he says it's the abomination, mm. abomination of all harlotry in the earth. You know, yeah. so what you're talking about now is is the world system that has been so entrenched into us. You know. Yeah. We need to start taking it and according to, like you said, according to our identity, place it where it's supposed to go. Yes, economy is important, but economy is generated when I look at the need of the other person. Yeah, exactly. And I, go and I start meeting that need, not I meet the need so I can make money. Yeah, no. <laughs> Uh, I meet the need because afterwards it will produce, yes, a value. But I'm not doing yeah. it for that specific purpose. See, now yeah. that is a, you know, it's, it's a mind bender. It? <laughs> but, you know, we, we've so never thought that's like that. But th- that's what actually Mystery Babylon is all about. Mm. You know? mm, mm, mm. Just, turn, just to... Turn, uh, turn us into these uh, empty vacuums uh, that just consume. You yeah. just consume all the time. Sure, man. That is such a cool, that's uh, such a cool perspective. Yeah. Oh, well, guys, um, I don't know why we went into that, but I think that was uh, important. And um, yeah, tonight we're going to be kicking off with uh, Romans 9. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we're going into a little bit of, of Israel here. And uh, we're going to bring Israel into context in the gospel. And it's going to be an interesting, uh, interesting read. Very interesting. Um, the way this whole thing has been set up and how we've been saved through the instrumentality of the Jews, you know. And um, yeah, so should we just kick it off and um, go straight into it? Yeah, we what just, you uh, go, as, as you know, we're just going to jump, uh, obviously, to the main verses. Um, yeah. We can't go verse by verse, but yeah. we'll definitely cover the, the the fundamentals of the chapters, you know. And yes. uh, the uh, chapter 9, for example, it starts with uh, righteousness on the basis of faith mm-hmm. instead of righteousness, you know, on um, on the basis of the law. Yeah. Exactly. So that's, that's the comparison now that he's going to start giving uh, in chapter 9, you know, but uh, now verses 1 through 8 is the difference between the children of promise and the children of works from yes. verses 1 to 8. So uh, at the end of the day, we must be thankful as believers, Christian believers, Gentile believers for the Jews and what they brought to us. And yep. in verse 4, it says they brought um, uh, adoption. Yeah. You know, in other words, the teaching of adoption, the teaching of the glory of God that brought yeah. to us, the teaching of the covenants, you know, so that we yes. can understand covenants were taking place. Uh, the actual giving of the law, and he's speaking specifically of the law in a sense of, you know, how to run justice, uh, social, uh, how yes. to run your health, how to run and all that stuff, okay? Yeah. So he says, guys, be thankful for what they, they've given us, you know? Absolutely. And yeah. also he says the service of God and and also he says the promises. Yeah. You know? So now everything that we have in Jesus is basically has come from what, what the, the Jews have brought to us. 
And we can learn from that through the Lord Jesus Christ, obviously. Yeah. All of these things, you know, because, uh, you know, he inherited the promises. He gave us a proper perspective on, on the law and how, why God really give the law for what was the purpose, never for righteousness, as we'll see in chapter 10, you know, yeah. and the end of chapter 9. And, uh, you know, the, the glory, in other words, we understood his names. I mean, if it wasn't for the Jews, how would we know what, what the names were? You know, it's, it's, we could see as, for example, with Abraham, that he was Jehovah Jireh, because he says, this is who I am, that's my name. So we should be thankful, he says, for what the Jews, the physical Jews brought to us, you know, yeah. the Jews with the ethnicity, uh, you know, the yeah. physical Jews, obviously. Absolutely. But again, he's going to get into from verse six and verse six opens up everything, guys. It's, it opens up the whole chapter. You yeah. know, where it's, he says, it's so important there, Tasso, just before you get to six is that because you get a lot of Christians that are so anti-Jew, you know, they are. Yes. Totally anti-Jew. Um, I think, obviously, they take it a little bit personal that, okay, you know, the Jews rejected Christ, you know, they, they're not really believers and, and whatever. But all these things that we've just spoke about now, we've got to remember that came through them. You know what I'm saying? Those are, those are precious, precious gifts that came through the, uh, yeah. the Jewish nation, you know? Yeah. So now, what they did with Jesus, it's another story. Obviously, they rejected him as a whole. There were yeah. obviously a few that uh, did accept. Uh, it's always a remnant. But at the end of the day, he says, yeah, listen, be thankful. Uh, yeah. Because we'll get into this and you'll see there is what we call the ethnicity of the Jew, you know, with Abraham. And there is the spiritual Israel, which we'll see yes. here is any person that accepts Christ into their life, Jew and Gentile, becomes the true Israel. You know, yes, and, uh, the, the promises were given to them. But remember, because there was also a physical Jew, you know, he happened to be a physical Jew. Uh, the physical Jews also received certain promises. For example, the land that they have in Jerusalem, you know, all of those promises that were given as, as physically Jews, whether they do believe in Jesus or not, doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, that's just, just a physical thing just happened because, okay, well, yeah. physically, you know, uh, they come through that. But at the end of the day, you want to be a spiritual Israel, you know. Um, exactly. And he says it's of the heart and accepting Christ because, man, <laughs> what is given us there, it is beyond, uh, you know, the free gift of righteousness. And you'll see all those things that they go through. But don't forget yeah. that there is the physical and that there are still promises for that physical person, you know, yes, was, yes. Yeah. and also, um, uh, so so you guys heard that. So, if you've received the, the Lord Jesus Christ, you are the true spiritual Jew, so you can't be upset with Jews, eh? Because you guys yeah. are actually, Jews. <laughs> and and you've got to remember what we do tend, what we do tend to see is a lot of a lot of uh, um, especially in the evangelical church and the charismatic side of things. The guys are starting to embrace Jewish teachings and uh, um, looking for more power in the Jewish traditions and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's also something we've got to be very careful of because we, don't, we, we do not find our identity in any of those physical Jewish things. You guys, we, we've yeah. got to be careful. I saw, I saw uh, um, Benny Hinn the other day and Benny Hinn had a, a Jewish rabbi who was there and apparently he's got a prayer shawl around his neck and um, he's got the, the the true, true olive oil from Israel, okay, and he sells that shawl with the oil and the CDs in Hebrew because it's, uh, it's written in Hebrew and because it's spoken in the original language, it has more power, it carries more power. This, there's a lot of that stuff coming into the church and we've yep. got to be careful with that. You have to be very careful, you know what I mean? Yeah. Very careful. Well, Weren't we you guys running around with long sideburns and prayer shawls? Yeah, and uh, chauffeurs and blowing trumpets. and. Uh, That's another one. The chauffeur thing is so big, uh, uh, Tasso. Yeah. Uh, can you break down? Can you break down for the guys? What is the purpose of the chauffeur? I mean, this thing is in all the churches. What's going on? Uh, I don't yeah. know. Yes, see. Yeah. I went to a big it's, meeting the other day and the Oaks couldn't pray until somebody blew the chauffeur. I was yeah. like, come on. 
Yeah, look, uh, the shofar, I mean, it, it, when you look at it, it was just uh, the thing that they sounded because either was, was it for war, either was for praise. And it was some type of a gathering uh, uh, to, to call up the congregation, you know what I mean, uh, yeah. of Israel. So, um, you know, they, they used it, uh, uh, you know, when they were going to war, uh, you know, it, it was used. Obviously, it was, it was different, um, uh, how can I say, blows. That they were yeah. doing, you know, for war was um, two for this. I, I'm not, I'm, I, I don't know how many, but it was definitely different. Yeah. Okay. Now, today, okay, what chauffeur? I mean, <laughs> today is, is the, the chauffeur is Jesus himself because he's in our hearts, you know? Yeah. And uh, today we've got him in our hearts. And the minute we believe it in our hearts, that is the cry of the shofar. Whatever you believe the truth in your heart cries out as a shofar. But you yes. don't bring a shofar. It was just a symbol, guys. That's all it was. Exactly. Uh, so, you know, you can't go and make things like this spiritual as though they're going to do something. And most yeah. people, they think by using shofar, going and writing Hebrew and bringing the olive, they think, again, what is the, they think they're going to make God move now. Because now, yeah. listen. You know, yeah. the actual praying in English. Come on, now I'm reading it in the Hebrew, the language you say. That. Okay, yeah. come. Okay? It's not just any oil, olive oil from Kalamata, from Greece. This is yeah. from uh, the olive grove here, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Why do they do that? I mean, it's the motive usually is to make God move. Yeah. It's like yeah. God's now, here's the chauffeur, and all of a sudden, it's something yeah. he's never heard before. You know, he's like, I'm crying out. I'm waking yeah. up. Yes, I'm coming. You know? Shame, man. You know, is Jesus enough or is he not enough, guys? Come on. Yeah. Man. You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, uh, there's a lot of this, uh, a lot of this chauffeur blowing thing going on in South Africa now where the Oaks are putting it on big sound systems and they're blowing it right across cities. And, yeah. uh, man, come on, guys. Come on. Are you saying... Are you saying that, like Tasso is actually saying, are you saying the sound of a chauffeur is going to is going to touch God's heart more than the sound of his own child's voice? Yeah, yeah. Oh, come on, man. You know what I'm saying? So you see, you see, and, and this is where we've got to be careful of, guys. So we, so we, we don't, uh, we don't. There's no animosity against the Jews. There's no, uh, but there's no joining the Jew either. You do mm. not get involved with all this weird and wonderful stuff. Either because we know who we are. We are the true sons and daughters because we're the ones that received the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's we true. are the ones that have received the Holy Spirit. So, yeah. Uh, do you want to kick off from six then, Tassel? I'll, yeah. You want me to read them? So, you want Please. me to go from six to eight and then we'll start breaking it down? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so do you want to, should I just start from one or do you want to go from six? No, no, six is fine. Okay, okay, so here we go. But it is not that the word of God has taken no effect, for they are not all Israel who are of Israel, nor are they all children because they are the seed of Abraham. But in Isaac your seed shall be called. That is, those who are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, mm. but the children of the promise are counted as seed. Yeah. Okay. So that's quite an interesting passage here, because what he's trying to say, even he says, the, hold on one second, he says, even the physical Jews that came from, from, uh, from Abraham, he says, we've got a bit of a problem here. So what problem? You know, Abraham. Well, he had two sons, one with a bond woman. Mm -hmm. It's still his seed, he says, and yeah. one with obviously Sarah. But the issue yep. here is uh, with Hagar, we got the Arabs. Yes. You know, so this is, he says, he goes back and he says, even if you try to locate yourself with a physical aspect of the seed of Abraham, you know, uh, his, his, his physical seed, he says, produced, uh, obviously, the child of the promise, but also his physical seed you know, was also produced bondage. Yeah, absolutely. You know? 
So this is this is the the, the sort of um, and he's trying to get away from the physical thing, and that's why he says, "Hold on one second. Not all Israel is Israel." Yeah. In in you know in verse um, uh, verse six, and that's why I'm saying this is the key key verse that opens up everything, which we find in Romans three twenty one and twenty two, that says, <clears throat> "I'm just going to read it quickly." Okay. Um, he says. But now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophet, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith in or of Jesus Christ, notice, unto all. It's, it's, it has come up on everybody, mm -hmm. but it says it's the people who believe it that experience it. Mm -hmm. Come on, everybody. But it is obviously, you know, on the people who believe it. So who is the true Israel? Who is the true Jew? If you go back to, I think, Romans 2 and verse 28, he says, for he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly and circumcised, notice, in the heart. In the spirit, mm -hmm. not in the letter, whose praise is yeah. not from him, but from God. So we see it very clearly there, okay? Yeah. Very. very clearly that not all Israel is, is Israel, only those obviously who accept. But even he says, if you were a physical Jew, we still have a problem. Mm. Because one seed, it's still from Abraham, doesn't matter. Yeah. One yeah. was from works and one was of faith. Yep. Hmm. Interesting. Eh? Yeah, in Isaac, he says, you, like you mentioned here, your seed yeah. is going to, yeah. So Ishmael being a son of Hagar, obviously his type of works, but here God gave, um, you know, obviously uh, Abraham a promise. And the yeah. promise obviously had to do only with Isaac. So that's, yeah. that's always key here. Not everyone that's been born of Abra uh, Abraham is Israel. You know, even the nation of Israel, he says, because yeah. obviously he's got other kids who are Arabs. And, and, I'm, yeah. I, yeah. and I mean, you know, I don't mean it derogatory, you know, I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, so he, the question mark is, are they Israel? <laughs> They're not. Mm -hmm. You know, so... Yeah. This yeah, is... So, uh, so clear, it's so, it's in black and white, guys. Yeah. Let's see. Do you want to carry on there from nine? Yeah. Or where do you for, want to go to, Tassel? Where do you want to go to on chapter nine? Yeah, we can just quickly go through it. For uh, This through. is the word of, of promise. At this time, I will come, and this was the promise, and Sarah is going to have a son. And not only this, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one man, even by her father Isaac, he goes on and he says, now this is the important part I wanted to, to talk about. The children not, not yet being born, okay, notice what he says, not having done any good or evil. Yeah. Nothing yet, okay? So mm -hmm. what does that mean? It's not about performance. Yeah. They haven't done any good or evil. So whatever he's going to say next, it's got nothing to, to do about performance. Yeah. Okay. That the purpose of God according to election, the word election is, and that's the key word here, people, is the word choosing. Yep. So he says that the purpose of God according to choosing, to invitation, everything is based on invitation. And remember what I've just read, and that's why I read chapter 2 and chapter 3. It came up on all, but who believes it? Who chooses it, in other words? Yeah. So he says here that God has already spoken, and then he said it's according to choosing that it might stand, notice, not of works, which is basically performance, but of him who calls. What does it yeah. mean to, means to invite? Invite. 
Yeah. Yeah. So he's invited everybody. Am I right? Mm -hmm. and, and we know that um, it's an open invitation. I think it's Matthew 22. Remember, come and eat of the banquet for free. Yes. There's Absolutely. a parable there, you know, eat yeah. for free. You know, that's the invitation. And um, uh, so the invitation here to Rebecca's kids, which is Esau and what was the other guy? Uh, um, Jacob. Jacob, thank you. Yeah. It's equal invitation. Come Esau, come yeah. Isaac, come uh, Jacob, come, you know. Yeah. But it can't be by your performance. Yep. You must yeah. choose what I'm giving you. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying here. And it was said to her, the older shall serve the younger. That's Genesis, um, I've got here, 25. So now that's totally against tradition. How can <laughs> the younger serve the older? The older serve the younger, yeah, exactly. Yeah, always. So that means God overrides everything and he says, well, I don't care about traditions. I don't care about whatever it is. This is according yeah. to choosing because I'm giving it to you for free. Exactly. <laughs> and yeah. then he says um, in verse 13, the, 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 the famous verse that people always sort of quote. Yeah. Uh, As it is written, Jacob I've loved. Okay, why is he loving Jacob? Because Jacob, what did he do? He chose life. He chose yeah. what was given God from God as a free gift, you know. Yeah. And the word loved means accepted the invitation and valued the city and the kingdom. Yes. Which so. city? You know, the New Jerusalem, mm -hmm. the city of, of that's found in your heart, the kingdom of God. That's what he's talking about here. He valued yeah. the city. He valued, you know. Uh, in other words, he valued being an heir. He didn't yeah. want to perform. He valued that. I'm, I'm valuing that you're giving this to me as a free gift. And I thank you for the invitation. Exactly. That's what he valued. It's a, it's a, strong, it's a strong statement. Eh? Jacob, I love, but Esau, I have hated. No. Yes, yeah. And Esau, he says, um, I've hated. Now, let's go to Malachi chapter, uh, chapter 1 and verse 3. Because that's where it comes from. Malachi, it's the last book of the Bible. Chapter 1 and verse 3. Yeah. And, sorry, verse 2, my apologies. I have loved you, says the Lord, yet you say, in what way have you loved us? This is generally now the priest's in those days, he says, was not Esau Jacob's brother, says the Lord. Yet Jacob I have loved. And I like that word, loved is the word in the Hebrew, ahav, A-H-A-V. Okay. And it means, man, guys, listen to this. He was able to draw near. Sure. <laughs> sure. And kindle. A fire of passion. Mm. Jeez. That's the word in the Hebrew. Um, you can check it out. Is the word A H A V Achav. Okay. Sure. So he was able to draw near and kindle a fire of passion. Now, wow. verse Jeez. three. But Esau, I have hated. The word for hated comes from a root Semitic word, which means sane, S-A-N-E, sane. Okay. okay. I can't take the credit for this. The credit must take it. Verna, my wife, she showed me this stuff. So <laughs> yeah. I'm what she showed me. <laughs> <laughs> no, serious. I'm serious. Was it and, when you guys were having an argument and she wanted to explain hate? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm going to show you in I'm the Hebrew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which way, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's the word sane, and in its Semitic root, it expresses turning away, alienation, creating distance, and estrangement. Oh, my goodness. Hmm. Okay. That's what the word, so there's not, it's not actually the word hate. Yeah. Okay. It is the word for alienation from what you're offering. Yo, yo, yo. Okay. And um, the other God, because he accepted, his heart was kindled with passion between him yeah. and God. Yeah. But with him, it's the opposite. Mm. He felt that distance. He felt that is in strange estrangement. I'm estranged and I don't feel that. Now, what created that? Again, not from God's side. Yeah. Yeah. I was about okay. to say, because when you read it at it's first, it looks. Yeah. 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 How people responded. Now, do you know that the word in 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 the in the Greek for hate is the word miso. Miso, if 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 I change the um uh, if, if I change the accentuation, yeah. instead of saying it's M-I-S-O, but the accentuation is the, in the O. If I change the accentuation on the I, miso means half. Ah. Which means, you know, which means separation. Separate, divide, yeah. Mm. Divide, you see. Yeah. So, but the Hebrew, way, obviously, this is where Paul got it from, and that's why I went back to Malachi, yeah. This is the best, <coughs> best way. Yeah. These are the actual words that it's talking about. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So, so he says, yeah, look, Jacob, I have loved. Now you know what we're talking about. And yeah. Esau hated. So this now from verse 13 to verse 16, you know, a lot of people think it's talking about predestination. But all he's saying is mercy comes by promise. That's all he's saying. Yeah. <laughs> you know, mercy means you don't deserve. It's my nature, and I've decided to just give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So he says, that's why I'm promising you because it's not based on you. Yeah. I can promise it because it's not based on you. It's coming yeah. simply from my nature. Yeah. You know, I'm my compassion, this. who I am. As a father, and that's my nature. Sure. So he goes there and he says in verse 14, what shall, so again, what do we see? We see three comp contemporaries here. One, we see Isaac and uh, Ishmael. Next, we see Esau and Jacob. Yeah. Now, we're going to see two contemporaries, Moses and Pharaoh. Mm. But remember, they were brothers, not necessarily by blood. Yeah. But, okay. So they're all. They, that's what he's trying to bring on here. That that the, the decisions that people dis, you know made, you'll see now created a hard heart or it created a soft heart. Soft heart. Yeah. Yeah. Like we say, I'm sure we. You, you must have heard that. Uh, the saying that says the sun's rays soften the butter and harden the clay. Yeah, yes. It's the same rays, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So the rays don't change. Yeah. It's the for sure. or the ingredients, if you want to say, or the what's another word I'm looking for? In in inside the the the, the, the substance of something, you know, the that makes it the hard, am I right? Or it makes yeah. it soft. For sure, for yeah. sure. So now that's what we're going to see quickly. Uh, so he says in verse, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? <clears throat> Turns out, he, can, can there be called on God? He says, can there be unrighteousness with God? He says, certainly not. Can never mm. be that. Absolutely. For instance, to Moses, now notice here, 
and, and that's obviously in Exodus 33, he says, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy. So the minute you read that verse, you stop. Oh, hold on. God decides who is yep. going to show mercy and who is not going to show mercy because it's, of it's, the way it's worded. Our, our, our pre-determined um, theological positions yes. make us see it that way. Yep. If you go to John 3.16, we see that he gave to everybody his mercy. Everybody. For God's the love of God. Come on. Yeah, so absolutely. When he says, yeah, that I will show, I will have mercy, okay, to who? To the whole world. On whomever I will have mercy. And remember, mercy means undeserved favor. That, that's yeah. what it means. In other words, it, it's something you never deserve. And specifically, the word mercy has nothing to do with anything else or the performance of the person. It comes from the compassion of the one giving it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And this is what I'm saying here. God's compassion and ability is to bring undeserving change. Yeah, but you can see here now where these, um, like the, uh, what do you call these Calvinist guys, where they're coming with election yeah. They take yeah, an yeah. election. You can see how they've they've twisted this whole thing around you with yeah. the sovereignty thing. Yo, that's Absolutely. bad, eh? Yeah. Yo. And that's their famous one, eh? 15. Um, I will, I will have mercy on whoever I'll have mercy. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. This is their favorite one. So then in verse 16, it says, It is not of him who wills, not of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. What does that mean sure. when we say mercy? It comes by promise. Exactly. So I can will something for God to do. Yeah. <laughs> I can't sit there and pray enough for to make God move. Exactly. This is what he's saying here. Yeah. Okay. He's saying, guys, don't try to earn mercy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It, it's it's some religious thing that you used to do to your other gods, but here yeah, we, we this doesn't operate that way. Yeah, like, be, be like, comes by promise. Be like Jacob, be like Jacob, and enter into that that beautiful, yeah. passionate yeah. call, uh, that passionate thing where you can the enjoy fire. it. She connect, yeah, yeah. Jeez, what was it? What was that? Just give me that 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 word again that you said loved. That explanation Ahav. that was A H A V Ahav. A H A V. Yes. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. And, and it means, <coughs> excuse me, it means, as I said, I've written it here, uh, to draw near, to kindle a fire of passion. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Eh? Beautiful. Sure. Guys, how beautiful so, is that? How beautiful yeah, is it's that? amazing. It's amazing. And then in verse 17, he goes on, he says, For the scripture says to Pharaoh, notice, even for this same purpose, in verse 17, I have raised you up that I might show my power in you and that my name, notice, what is the names of God, eh? My name. Yeah. might be declared in all the earth. Okay? Therefore, he has mercy on whoever he wills, and whoever he wills, he hardens. So, if you look at that, he says, you know, I've raised you, my, my friend. I've raised you because, notice what he says, because I want you to know my name. I want you to experience my power. Yeah. Look what he says to Pharaoh. Exactly. Now, people read it differently. They, they, they say, hold on, you raised Pharaoh so that you can use him to glorify yourself. Yeah, to show off your power. So yeah. And so God is some egocentric. We yeah. forget who he is, and we read in this verse something that's not even there. Yeah, sure. I mean, listen, 99% yeah, of the church, I know, I've heard that uh, he was hardened 
for that reason, so yeah. that God could show the yeah. secular world that he was a God of, of these people. Oh, my word, you know. For yonks, we've heard, we've been taught that stuff. Mm. So, look, in, in chapter 9, what we basically see is that God was bound to a covenant with Israel. That's what we see in chapter 9. They got into a situation where God had to act, and therefore God had to keep his word. The Israelites' position was so unique in the history of mankind that God did very unique things. Yeah. Okay. So now, um, you know, God never changes. But always remember, exactly. covenants change. Yeah. Okay. So to the context of God's relationship changes. In other words, the way that we're going to relate to it, to one another. That's what yeah. changes. And we need to remember yeah. that, that, you know, when we're going through this uh, sort of chapter nine situation here. So, um, in, where were we now? Sorry, man, I've lost my... Uh, we were on 18. Therefore, he has mercy on whom he wills, and whom he wills, he hardens. Okay. So, in, um, in verse 17, we see that Pharaoh's heart, okay, um, had what we call a self-worth problem. Yeah. Th that's what we see here in this verse. And uh, the problem is he started passing judgments on, on what God was saying. Yeah. But from exactly. his low self-worth. Yep. Mm. Yeah, that, that's what we see here. And, um, uh, you know, and, and those judgments that he made actually took him deeper meanings and, and, and sort of what was God was actually saying. Yeah. You know, he, 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 you know he made, he, God was just saying something, So, but the, his low self-word was creating deeper meanings on, on what he was saying. Yeah. You know, this is that thing that's that terrible, those terrible twins that you can't separate, and that is the low self-worth or the insecurity, and it's, it's, it always hides deep down in pride. And yeah. pride and insecurity, you can't separate the two. You can't. They you work can't. together hand in hand. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, as God is telling him things, I mean, if you go and read it, you'll see his low self-esteem in front of his subjects and whatever, you know, he, he started building up pride against God. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Because yeah. he was he was looking at looking as less of a god, if you know what I'm saying. Because yeah. he yeah. saw himself as the sun as the as the bright and morning star. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Pharaohs were like that, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's what we see here. And then in verse 18, he says, Therefore he has mercy uh, whom, whom he wills, and whom wills he hardens. So how do they get hardened? I mean, they explain to you up in verse 11, based on their choosing. Yeah. Okay? So the choosing is what made them experience hardness of heart. Not that God did it. Exactly. They chose exactly. not to accept, you know, not to the mercy that was coming towards them. That's what he's saying yeah. here. So... Yeah. Um, you see how this lines up with the, the sovereignty that we're always talking to you guys about, guys. Yeah, it's so yeah. important because people think that just I mean they have no they have no say of what God's doing in their hearts. That's ridiculous. Yes, it's yeah. Ridiculous. So, what was the effect of the mercy of God? That's the question mark here on Pharaoh's heart. Yeah. What was the effect? You see. Mm -hmm. Hardness. Hardness and pride. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So look at uh, chapter 11 and, and verse 7. Chapter 11, verse 7. Mm -hmm. It says there, What then? Israel has not obtained what it seeks, but the elect 
not the predestined, no, yes. the choosing mm. ones, elect, those yeah. who choose, have obtained it, and the rest were hardened. Sure. Because <laughs> they chose it, and the rest who did not choose, by default, you're hardening yourself. Yeah, but exactly by default. Even so then, at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. What's election? Choosing. Choosing, yeah. Sure. Beautiful. According to the choosing of grace. So we see it's, it's a choice. That's why I'm, uh, you, you, can you see why Pharaoh's heart was hardened? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he didn't choose. So when you start rejecting mercy, the Bible says it, it, it causes blindness. Yeah. And hardness. To come up on your heart and your yeah. life. Okay, so it's not, you know, just by looking at a couple of verses, it opens up the verses. Yeah, it's not difficult, yeah. guys. Okay, yeah. so um, I don't know if you if you want to say anything or you know. No, oh, no, I'm just I'm actually my mind is just thinking about that that beautiful line where. And it's so pertinent in everything, you know, with that the insecurity and the pride, and how the um, how the same rays will soften that heart and and other harden that heart. And yeah. uh, as you're saying it, I'm just seeing how many times that has happened in my life, and how many times that has happened in people's lives. Sure. Yeah. And remember, guys, that's why we want your heart to be softened by by um, experiencing. Righteousness is a gift. That's yes. what softens your heart. Absolutely. Well said, and remember, yeah. everything here that's talking about is the condition of our hearts. Everything that you see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Sure. because um, when someone is self sort of righteous and 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 self reliant, like you, you know, like uh, what's his name, um, like Pharaoh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when mercy comes into someone's life, it will harden their heart. Yeah. How? Absolutely. Well, I mean, if all my life I've been gaining and accumulating wealth and, and, and I, you know, because of, of the, the wealth, that's how people measure respect. So I'm yeah. getting now this respect. And now God comes and he says, no, but I'm offering it to you as a free gift. Yes. You know. It's a problem. Exactly. I mean, it's a, it's almost an insult to my strength, my own yeah. physical strength, my own physical Beautiful. knowledge. You know. Yeah. Beautiful. It's yeah. an insult. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a scary thing, man. It's yeah. a scary thing. So again, always remember the same sun rays that melt the butter, harden the clay. That's okay? it. Um, sure. You know, the, the law of mercy is like the law of gravity, guys. We can't change it. Yeah. You know, to, to change the law of mercy is to try to change God. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he created it to run that way. That yeah. He's, he's the giver, you the receiver. That's how, yeah. that, that's how it works. Yeah, exactly. The greater always blesses the lesser. It can't Absolutely. be the other way around. Yeah. Can't be the other way around. Yeah. So that's, that's I think that's what the um, in verse eighteen, and you know, uh, you know, if there's anything else you guys want to, you know, when you read through it, because I want to jump a little bit down. Now you've understood, I think, what what we're trying to say here. You know that it always has to do about what who God is and what He's offering, rather than um, you know rather than our performance. Okay. Absolutely. That's awesome. That's beautiful. Should we take a, a five minute break and then we pick up? We can take a break, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I don't know if uh, Bash can just put that up for us, but you guys, you've got to take a quick uh, uh, toilet break, coffee break, and then we're going to jump straight back into it. It's been absolutely beautiful so far. Okay.
Awesome. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you had a quick, uh, um, quick uh, coffee break and you're ready to rock and roll. We're just going to breeze through the rest of 11. And um, yeah, and then we'll be uh, calling it a night. And uh, yeah, but it's been so beautiful so so far. So important to see. Once again, guys, you, you can't afford to allow yourself to get caught up in all this false doctrine of you have no control of your heart. Your heart is fully under your control. And just give yeah. it over to Jesus, man. Just give it over to God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, let's shoot at verse 19 quickly. You will say to me then, why does he still find fault? For who has resisted his will? In other words, if God hardens hearts, then basically he says he's unjust. That's what he's trying to say in this verse here. And yeah. God can't be unjust. If we say God does good to the one and bad to, uh, obviously, to another, uh, like a lot of churches believe yeah. that, by the way, okay, yeah. uh, then how can we be blamed if we can't resist his will? Notice. Yes. Yeah. How can I, anybody be blamed if I can't resist his will? I can't be blamed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, I, so make sense. yeah. Whatever will be, will be. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> 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 now you remind me of uh, what was that guy's name? Uh, Huckenby, no, what was his name? Um, ah, some singer, I forgot his, uh, yeah, he oh, always used to uh, 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 Yes, he meant, uh, he's big in Vegas now. Is he, he, he played yes, his last yeah. years in Vegas. Ah, yeah. Humphrey Bogart. That's it. Humphrey Bogart, yeah. <laughs> that's the guy. Uh, that's a him in some churches. Hey, that's a him in some churches, that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's a speciality at a uh, specific casino at Carnival. That's the theme there. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, it's no, true. Kind of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever will be, will be. You put yeah. in your put in your, your pension fund, yeah, and maybe, just maybe, you'll yeah. be a millionaire. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. So, yeah, that's what he says, 19. This 20 says, but indeed, O man, who are you to reply against God? Will the thing formed say to him who formed it, why have you made me like this? He's saying, listen, how can you turn around and say to God, okay, why did you make me not like you, omniscient, yeah. omnipresent, so I don't have any use of you? Yeah. That's what he's saying here. Why did he says why? <laughs> why did you make me so that I can be depending on you? He says, yeah. "Come on, guys, you, you, you're going beyond. <laughs> you know, you created that way, you wired that way. That's who you are to connect to him, enjoy a relationship with him, and move forward. So accept yeah. it. Yeah, you know. Yes. And um, um. Well, uh, yeah, th that was 20. So you can't, you know, uh, you cannot lay t t to God's charge that God did not try to reach them, basically, you know. So yeah. um, in verse 21, he says, does not the potter have power over the clay? Now, listen to this. From the yeah. same life to make one vessel of honor and another for dishonor. He says, look, God has that ability to do all these yeah. things. But he doesn't. We know his character. Yeah. You see, this exactly. is, you know, he, he doesn't say that the potter which God does that. You know, he says, no, God has that ability to do it. But yes. we know his, his nature, We know, and, and you'll see it further down, because he says in verse 22, what if God, not that God does it, what yeah. if God, if God would do it? Yeah. It's the key mm -hmm. words here. You know, yeah. this is not the way it is and not the way he is. And he's not making up, you know, he's making stories. He's not, you know, yeah. th this is this is what he's saying here. So God does have the ability to do these things, but he doesn't. So the yeah. type of vessel we are is determined by us and not by God. Oh, is that right? Yeah, of course it's right. In 2 Timothy, it tells you, let me just read it there quickly. Yeah. 
2 Timothy chapter um, uh, chapter 2 and verse um, 20, he says, But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, okay, uh, and this is obviously vessels used for service, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Mm. In other words, some vessels have a lot of more, more honor. Now, notice yeah. verse 21. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor. So it's not so, determined by God. Exactly. It's determined yeah. by us whether we're going to choose the free gift of righteousness. Okay. Yeah. Sanctified and useful for the master, prepared, prepared for every good work. Mm -hmm. So he's saying here, it entirely depends on us. Yes. Okay. Not on God. So um, we determine what type of vessel we are. How do we do it again? Through our choosing. Yep. That's what he says. So the main thing we need to choose is to believe what? The promise. That's it. That's sure. it. So God predestined and chose for us to be saved only if we come by faith to the Lord Jesus. That yeah. was the choosing. That yeah, that's it. Did. Okay. Absolutely. So it's for everybody to have that opportunity. But again, it's up to us to choose to do it, um, you know, in our daily lives. We, we're supposed yeah. to do that. To walk as That's children of promise, or we're going to walk as children of works. One of the two. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yes. Nobody can do that for us. It's up to us to choose that. Yeah. Okay. So How Jesus crazy is it, the penalty, he became the sacrifice. Yeah. How crazy is it that um, and all he's supplying and all he's saying is just choose it. Just choose. It's all yeah. the richness is there, the mercy, the grace, it's all there. Just choose this thing and let's kindle let's kindle that thing like he, we're saying with Jacob. Yeah. Aha, ahave. What? How did you say Aha. it? I love that. Aha. Uh, that's my new Aha. favorite word. Yeah. Sure. Man. Yeah. Man. So we see that in verse, uh, obviously, 21. And uh, verse 22 says, what if God? Now, it's going to tell you, and this is the key here. This is not the way. It is, you know, he, he's just making, he's creating a little story here. And he says, yeah. what if it was that way, okay? Wanting to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath prepared for destruction. In other words, first of all, when you read that scripture, you... You can't forget that Jesus paid the penalty. He became the sacrifice, and he satisfied God. Exactly. How can we forget that when we're reading that scripture? You can't. <laughs> exactly, yeah. They just throw it out there. They throw everything out of the bathwater. Yeah. Yes. So, um, did Pharaoh have a choice? Could have Pharaoh actually have obeyed God? Of course he could. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. But how? By releasing the Israelites. Yeah. Exactly. So, and he would have been triple and abundantly blessed. 100%. Because his sure. heart now opens and he can, he can receive now mercy of the promises, whatever they were participating in going and help. I mean, guys, go further down and read what happened. Remember the in the book of Esther? Yes. How come the king released, through Esther, released the Israelites to go back to the nation? How blessed was he? Yeah, sure. I mean, Can Pharaoh could have been the same. Yeah, exactly. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. But he, you know, he didn't do it. So, and he could have done this before any of the plagues were poured out. Mm. You know, and again, remember the plagues. It's not God punishing their sins. 
Yeah. He's not going against the um, uh, the Egyptian people and Pharaoh yeah. because of sin that they committing of not whatever, not accepting his mercy or not allowing the Israelites to go. No, those sins were paid on the cross. Yeah. So it was simply that God wanted and decided, listen, I want to take this people out so I can take them to the promised land. I've got a purpose for them to go and evangelize the rest of the world. Yeah. You know, that's the purpose here. So yeah, Pharaoh, please help me. Let's do yeah. this. Yeah. And by, you know, by going through the process, you're going to experience, obviously, the thing. But except the 10th plague, the nine plagues, every one of them, God was going against the gods. Yes. Because the 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 people of the, uh, the, the, the of, of uh, for four hundred years, they were looking at the gods of the Egyptians, and they were convinced in many of the areas of their lives that their gods were actually stronger than the God of Jehovah. Sure. Yes. See, well, listen. So they were conditioned. Now, yeah, yeah, condition. Yeah. yeah, because look at this. We're st sitting here. Yeah, we slaves. We gained four hundred years. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You made a promise to Joseph. Yeah, that you must take my bones out when you guys go to the land. Yeah, lekka, lekka. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. But where is it? You yeah. know. What I mean? So yeah. Moses, when they were resisting, and notice it was the, every time it's the authority of men. Sure, you're giving good context here now. This is good context for, sure. for those for those plagues and all, all of those actions of God there. Yeah. All of those actions. Okay, remember, it was, it was a get when hail come, couldn't they take the kids and go into in, into the houses or the cattle and put of course they could have done all those things. Okay. Yeah. There was ways they, they could have, but God was going against the river God now. God was going against you know, everything that had become their source. Yes. Okay. Sure. They they were worshipping the frogs. Well, this is what now the frogs are doing to you. Okay. Yeah. Because that's your God. You know what I mean? Yeah. The fleas. There was a God of the fleas. Everything, people, that was happening, God was going against their gods. Now, the Egyptians and the Israelites began to get confidence. Hold on one second here. Yeah. You know, every time now Moses goes and tells Pharaoh and speaks with authority that this is what's coming. That's the next plague that's coming. Yeah. He's telling them, listen, this is what the situation is here. Yeah. Now, I'm going against your God. So he took up all their gods, showed himself strong. Now the Israelites and Egyptians, the Bible says mixed multitudes went out, not just only the Israelites. Yes, exactly. So there were Egyptians that also believed and left with them. Mm, yeah. And sure. those were the oaks. That when they got to the other side, you know, they started putting up the golden calf and all of those things that were taking place. You yes. Know? Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. It was mixed multitude that was going with. So, sure. again, please remember this. God did not punish any sin, even in the Old Testament. Yes. Every sin that the most hideous sin that everybody committed, Jesus took that sin to pay it at the cross. So whatever God did was never for punishment. Yeah, absolutely. Never for punishment. It was always to be able to protect his line that was coming, number one, which was Jesus, because can you imagine if Jesus could not come, we had a problem. Yeah, of course. He would yeah. stay in the state that, you know, of a fallen state of Adam. So he yeah. had to protect that line for Jesus to come, you know. Obviously, he was protecting the righteousness that the Jews were, uh, you know, were, were living by. Yeah. The right way of, of, of their covenant that they were doing with him. So he had to protect that. He was protecting always the innocent. Yes, absolutely. And obviously he was showing a very secular, a very secular society at that time who he, he was exposing himself as the God of all gods, you know. Absolutely. 
Yeah, he had to, and that's why we don't we don't see uh, we don't see miracles like that today. Because uh, I mean, yeah. Jesus has really come. God, yeah. God doesn't have to move like that anymore. You know, yeah. and that's where a lot of people try they try to figure out. Okay, so now uh, is this God showing us now? He's clean. He's cleaned out the diary with COVID nineteen. You know, <laughs> yeah. what, what, what's God doing now with this plague? In, yeah. In, yeah. As, yeah, but uh, Tass is giving very, very good context here. Yeah, it's beautiful. So always remember that. that every, every time you read the Old Testament, God is not going against anybody. He's yeah. not punished because it's a, it's what we call the law of double jeopardy. Yeah. If you're taking someone else's sins and putting it on Jesus, okay, because he took sins past, present, and future, you know, yeah. of all every single human being, then how can you punish that person? Yeah. It doesn't matter what he's done. Yeah. You can't punish him because Jesus is paying for it. Yeah. For sure. So, very, like, for example, he, you know, um, uh, David, you know, was going back and picked up the, um, the Ark of the Covenant, mm -hmm. you know, and when he was he was taking the Ark of the Covenant, uh, there was, you know, there, there was, a, I don't know, stone or something, and it almost fell from the cart. And yes. then one of the guys, I forget his Uzziah. name now, when he touched it, sorry? Uzziah. Uzziah thank you, y'all. He touched yeah. it, and boom, he died. And people died. say, what's the story there? Well, first of all, God had given Moses exactly how to move. Just imagine that you've got um, something like um, uh, like an atomic bomb or something very, very powerful, okay, um, inside, you know, and, and obviously if you touch that, you know, you die. So God didn't, because he disobeyed, he didn't die. It was something very powerful within that specific box. Yeah, And he touched it, and that's why God had given specific prescriptions how to move it. Exactly. You can't move it with a cart. I told you. You must have all bearers. This is how you do it. You know. So yeah. then David went, because he got angry. He says, God, what's the story here? I was dancing and happy, and this is what you do. And God yeah. said, you know, go read exactly how this thing is supposed to move. You can't just take the Ark of the Covenant and, and do it that way, you know. Yeah. So, um, again, you know, sometimes we do certain things and then we blame God because we are disobedient. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, um, ignorant. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, uh, th this is what he's saying here. What if God, wanting to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath, he says, prepared for destruction. Now, he didn't prepare them for destruction. We know that. Because of our misbeliefs, our heart gets hard, and we go into destruction. Yeah. We choose destruction. Okay. And, um, uh, and look at verse 23. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. Okay. So why would God show patience to the vessels created for us? And then he says, basically he says, yeah, but look, we are partakers of the promises, you know, and the benefits of God through mercy, not by works. So how do yeah. I make myself a, a, a vessel of wrath? Because I go through works. Exactly. And I'm mm -hmm. not receiving, you know, I'm not receiving um, the mercy that he's giving me. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so, again, he's not talking here about the wrath, because remember, that wrath has been taken up at the cross. Yep. Okay, Jesus took to Isaiah 53. Isaiah 54 tells us all that. So, mm -hmm. he's not talking about that type of wrath. He's talking here specifically how um, Pharaoh reacted. He should have reacted differently. You know, and you would have experienced the mercy and the grace of God. So, sure. 
God is not controlling everything because why would he bother to show Pharaoh patience and then give and give him so many uh, multiple chances? Yeah, exactly. It's almost like, it's almost like God is like uh, uh, setting him up to destroy him. It's terrible. I mean, yeah, what, yeah, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Yeah. So he was completely going to save. So God can save Gentiles. And God can save, you know, Jews. This is basically what it's, it's bringing out here. Yeah. But both of them have to choose it. That's yep. why he say, don't question his will. Now you understand. Why are you trying to question his will? His will is to give it to you by mercy. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, in verse 24, again he says, even us whom he called. Again, it's a choosing, it's the invitation. Not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. So this happens to Jews or Gentiles. That's what he's going to say now in verse 20 to 23. Yeah. Sorry, what he said in verse 20 to 23. It's happening yes. because you choose, not because made it that way. So he's going to explain all that I've said, which looks very mystical. He's going to explain it now. Notice what he's going to say. As he says also in Hosea. I will call them people who were not my people and her beloved who was not beloved. God said to Israel, I will call other people my people because you basically have rejected me. Yeah. Verse 26, and it shall come to pass in the place where it was said to them, you are not my people. There they will be called sons of the living God. So Israel doesn't, uh, you know, uh, get uh, sort of upset and get over it. Gentiles will be your people, like it or not. That's what he's saying here. Then yeah. also in Isaiah, who cries out concerning Israel, it says, uh, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, the remnant will be saved, for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because the Lord will make a short work from the earth. And Isaiah said before, unless the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, and the seed is Jesus here, we would have become like Sodom, and we would have been made like Gomorrah. So if it were not for Jesus, we would have been a Sodom and Gomorrah, he says, because we would have been left in our own doings, we would have yeah. gone after our own lusts, our own flesh, and we would have brought destruction on ourselves. So, so this is what he's, you know, he's basically saying. So Israel thought, they were chosen, again, because of Abraham. Yeah. They didn't realize they were chosen to preach the gospel. That's what they were chosen. Yeah, you know? exactly. But they did not respond to the promise or what God actually had said to them. Yeah. And this is now in verse 30, the famous verses begin. What shall we say then? That... Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness, which is by faith. In other words, the Gentiles accepted the invitation. Yep. Hmm. So, in verse 31, but Israel pursuing the law of righteousness has not attained to the law of righteousness. They try to get it, obviously, by performance and by works. Why? Yep. Because they did not seek it by faith. But it, it worked by the works of the law, for they stumble, notice, at the stumbling stone, as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, and whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Notice, that's the, the, the offense. Yeah. Jesus yeah. himself. And Jesus, as, as, as you guys know, now, Chapter 10 opens up and actually carries on. We shouldn't have stopped there because he says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved, healed, delivered, prospered, made all set apart. And verse 2, I bear them witness that they have a zeal or a fervent desire for God, but not according 
to knowledge. What knowledge? The knowledge of Jesus. Yeah. Not according to knowledge. Okay. Yeah. Um, and verse three, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God. Man, Christ yes. is the end. This is the key verse here. Christ is the end of law for righteousness to everyone who believes. So notice, Christ is the end of the of, of law for righteousness. No, notice he didn't say for wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So the law can be used for wisdom, but it can't be used for righteousness. For righteousness, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. For to they being ignorant of God's righteousness, yeah. seeking to establish their own righteousness. Yes, it's strong words, eh? Strong, strong words, yeah. Your, and it's your. works, it's performance, you know. Yeah. And, uh, um, and ja remember, James, what does James 2.10 says? He says, if you if you failed on one, you failed in all. So where are you going with that logic? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You fail. Yes. You know? So yeah. um and it's beautiful the way he always refers to Jesus as yeah. he doesn't he doesn't refer to Jesus as Jesus, he refers to Jesus as the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God. It's beautiful. Oh, God. So uh, we're not going to go through uh, the rest of the verses because you guys all know that we will cover them after when we do righteousness and all that. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, so we, we don't have to go through it because you know most of, of these verses um, all the way down to verse uh, 17 where he says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if, you, you know, uh, that is quite easy to understand. We, we 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 preach it under salvation. We've done all that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, listen, I think I think got to you so far tonight is so awesome, and it's it's so much for the guys to go home and. I wonder and really just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we've also looked at verse uh, verses uh, chapter eleven a little bit, but what I want to do go down to chapter eleven. And yeah. verse, uh, let's see, verse 20. I'm talking about branches and in, uh, gra yes, grafting yes. into trees, you know, things like that, okay? Yeah. So he says there, um, well, look at verse 19. He says, you will say then branches were broken off that I might be grafted as Gentiles, you know? And in yeah. verse 20, he says, well said, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Had nothing to do that God went and broke off anything yet. Exactly. <laughs> okay. exactly. It's the own unbelief. That's you it. know, that yeah. you, know, you become withered and there's no life. And then you break yourself off because there's nothing there. You become dry and then you break yeah. off. That's yeah. what he's saying. So not God broke the Jews off. So that the Gentiles could come in. No, you Oaks didn't accept it. So you broke yourself off. Yeah, exactly. They rejected the yeah. laugh. Yeah. And you stand by faith. Do not now be haughty. Don't begin to think that you stand only or any other way but faith. It's always yeah. trust in a person, trust in his righteousness. That's okay. it. That's what he's saying here. Uh, for if God, verse 21, did not spare the natural branches, he may not spare you either. And, and this will be explained. How? What does that mean? If God did not spare the natural branches, he's not going to spare you. Well, look at verse 22, the famous verse. Behold, consider the goodness and the severity of God. Ah, you see. Come on, Oaks. You never teach on the scriptures because it doesn't suit you. Yeah. People say, you know what I mean? Guys, yeah. think about this. Okay, what does severity mean? Well, the minute we look at the word severity, means anger, means how severe he is. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. The word severity means to sever. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. he's saying here, behold, there is the goodness of God. And also the separation of God. 
Mm. On those who fell, severity. Not that God separated them, but their unbelief. He told you further up is what separated yeah. them. Yeah. Okay. So he says, those who fell, they themselves were not willing to believe. And they separated themselves from God. God never leaves anybody and he never forsakes anybody. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So, but towards you, he says goodness. Why? Because you've accepted his mercy. You accepted the free gift of righteousness. If you continue in his goodness. Now, that doesn't mean if you continue in his goodness, then you are saved. If you're not continuing in his good goodness, you're not going to be saved. The if is a conditional. He says, if you continue to make him in every day your righteousness, so you can experience him. You're going to keep experiencing what? His goodness. Yes. That's all yes. he's saying. Or yes. else in the areas that you're not experiencing God, you're not experiencing goodness. Yeah. Who separated it? He Did he do it? No, you did. Yeah. And that's why in that area you're not experiencing his goodness. Yeah. Then in verse 23 says, and they also if they do not continue in unbelief will be grafted in for God is able to graft them in again. Notice what he's saying. It's Jeez. always up to you. It's never too late. Yeah. You know, he says, if you want, come back. And, yes, of course I am. I'm willing. So they can still be grafted in if they get out of unbelief. And then look at verse yeah. 25. For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. Notice. Lest you should be wise in your own opinion that hardening in, in part has happened to Israel. So they think, well, you know, the sovereignty people think, well, God hardened their hearts so that the Gentiles can come in. Yeah, Okay. exactly. So <laughs> notice what it says here, until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Now, the fullness of the Gentiles, guys, you know what it is? It's not a set to number and God said, oh, that's it, all the Gentiles ain't. Okay, now let's bring, let's shift back to Jewish time. You know what yeah. I mean? No, 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 no. Yeah. What he's saying here, when the Gentiles provoke Israel to jealousy and Israel gets saved. That's the fullness. Yep. They're looking around, the Jews, and they're saying, man, hold on. We gave the lights to the world. We gave the covenants. We gave the glory. We gave the law. We gave everything, the adoption. Hold on one second. How, they, how come they're experiencing the benefits? Yeah. Of the free gift of righteousness. That's what he's saying. That yeah. we get this as a free gift and they keep trying to work for it. Sure. Exactly. That's the fullness of the Gentiles. Sure. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. And, and that's what I wanted to, to, to talk about here. And he says, and so notice all Israel will be saved as it is written. When were all Israel is going to be saved? Watch this. What's written? The deliverer will come out of Zion and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant with him when I take away their sins. So this happens, you know when? At the second coming. Yeah. What happens at the second coming is Antichrist and all of the, the nations are going against um, Israel. And you find that in Zechariah chapter 12 and 14. They're going against Israel. They take half of the city. Yeah. Joel chapter 2. Remember it says they're around in the cities and, and, and on the walls. Great is the army. That's not the army of God. That's the army yeah. of Antichrist people. Yeah. <laughs> And he says, when they reach and they take half of the city, all basically Israel is looking for the deliverer. At that time, he says, is the second coming. Sure. Mm, mm, mm. And he comes and, he's, and he puts his feet. First of all, he, obviously, he destroys uh, uh, Antichrist and the nations, and he puts in his feet on the olive. The mountain splits, okay? That's exactly what happened. At that time, all Israel... Is going to accept him and be saved. Mm. Praise God. 
And that's why he brings the deliverer will come out of Zion. Isaiah 59 verses 20 and 21. Okay. And then if you go all the way down, verse 28, concerning the gospel, there are enemies, it says, for your sake, but concerning the election, or if they choose it, in other words, they are beloved for the sake of the fathers of the Jews. For the gifts now, notice, the gifts and the callings of God are irrevocable. That you can't change the mind. And then goes down to verse 33, and he opens up and he says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are the judgments and his ways past finding out. He's talking about the peace of God that passes all understanding. Yeah. And he yeah. breaks, obviously, in praise. So that's it, guys. This is very wow. big sort of... Uh, you know, uh, mountain yeah. peak to mountain peak, yeah. Yeah, but you, but you uh, covered it nicely, but you covered a nice footprint there. That was awesome. Yeah, 9, 10, and 11. Yes, amen. When you read it, always remember, it's the choosing. Yeah, always. What I, so, and, and, and when you just go over it like that in detail, you just see how he builds the case, eh? He builds yes. it from man all the way through. Yes, it's so amazing. So, guys, go back there, enjoy it. Now you can go read Nine, ten, and you've been given you've been given all the the nuggets and you've been given the outline and the themes um everything you need to just go back there go over it do your own little bible study and uh, you can always play back some of the stuff that tassa was talking about tonight as well from from these feeds always play them back guys they're there for you you know that they don't get taken down they stay up on the page so you can play them back at any time and if they have any awesome. questions, they can send it to us, did he? If, if yeah. something they haven't understood or whatever, because obviously we went through it quite quickly. Um, yeah, so if, you, you know, if there's something you don't understand, please just, you know, send us a... Exactly, guys, please. Send it through. Send it through during the day. You can WhatsApp yes. us. You can... Uh, um, yeah, just send it through. Okay. No, that was awesome, brother. And uh, Bash thanks, has been working in the background there. Thanks every for everything, Bash, for hosting us on your yeah, uh, thanks, on your love, your love wire, uh, your Wi-Fi setup there. Whatever. Bash's room has become our actual control room, guys. <laughs> our broadcast yeah. center. <laughs> no, that's awesome. I don't know. You wanna you wanna close in prayer for us, Tasso? Is that cool? Yes, Heavenly Father. Thank you again so much for what you've given us. I thank you for each and every person that the more we talk about you, they see so clearly your goodness, your mercy. They see your father heart in every way. They see Jesus in every scripture, which represents you, Lord. I pray that they will connect with us. I have love where they will kindle their passion between you and them, Lord. And their heart will just light up with fire, with your love. Lord. Ah, thank you, Lord. I thank you for each and every person as they meditate and they begin to experience you more and more. They begin to get more experience of your knowledge of who you are, Lord. Thank you, Father. And they, and just like Paul, right at the end, breaks forth and he says, man, how unsearchable are your ways. How wonderful you are, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, there you go, guys. Thank you. We're going to close off with our, our board. Um, and you can see on their board how to contact us, how to get hold of us, and then also how to donate and just help us with uh, in, in any way that the Holy Spirit puts on your heart. So thank you so much, guys. Have a beautiful evening and sleep tight in the arms Amen. of the one who loves you. Amen. Bye-bye. <laughs>